All right, guys, today I thought we'd go over my collection of Spyderco specific knives. Now, I will do videos and I occasionally do periodic updates to my whole collection, but I thought it'd be fun to go over all the Spydercos because oftentimes I'm only showing one or two or maybe three to like make a point about certain locking systems or a certain type of knife. But I thought I'd go over all of the above to kind of go over them, talk about them, and tell you guys which ones I really love the most. So let's first jump off with the one that probably makes the least amount of air time and it's probably my least favorite in fairness but this is the Spyderco Senta Fonte. Now this is a knife that I think Spyderco released and like no one really talked about even though honestly it's not a half bad knife. Like probably the worst part about this is it's pinned together construction so you can't really take it down unlike something along the lines of a Delica 4 or Delica yeah. Delica 4. So unfortunately, you know, you can't really take it down, but as far as it goes, like it has a very similar blade thickness, very similar handle style. Um, usually the stock steels on these are very similar. This one uses uh, VG10. This one is K390, but usually a fairly similar blade steel and thickness. So overall, um, the Centifonte kind of flies under the radar, but I have one. They're not horrible. I just never carry it because I'm not a huge fan of especially like rear mounted lockbacks and the whole uh, blade shape doesn't really fit my style. So anyways, that is the Centifonte. Speaking of it, because we already grabbed it and talked about it, is the Delica 4 by Spyderco as well. Now this is a K390 version that is actually pretty new to my collection. This one is a user and an abuser, and I'm probably gonna end up actually bluing the whole blade just because it already has a bit of a patina going on, but this is, like I said, the Delica 4. It's a classic. I think the Delica 4 is one of those knives that, like, if you're into knives, you kind of just have to have because they are such a staple. They're such a classic that they're really hard to go wrong with and overall pretty good blades. And I wanted for this one to be a test bed for K390. All right, next one up, we'll talk about the Spyderco Para 3. Now this one is honestly a spider code that I've had for quite some time and uh, it stuck with me through all the years and I really don't hate it but it's not one of my favorites. I actually when I first got it loved the heck out of it and I thought it was really great. I thought it was actually better than the paramilitary 2. Boy was I wrong in that regard but the para 3 is a really solid knife and because it is a part of the para family it does work quite well. Now mine is pretty plain Jane with the stonewashed S30V blade in the black g10 handles and pretty much just completely stock but that's not bad i i like it the way it is and once again with the amount of carry time it sees which is not a ton unfortunately all right next one up let's talk about probably these are like my four favorite spider co's of them all don't get me wrong these ones are cool and i like them for their own reasons but let's jump into the first one so the Spidey Chef. The Spidey Chef has actually been seeing less pocket time, primarily because there's a lot of awesome knives in my collection. Not to say that the Spidey Chef isn't one. It is really cool. It just has a very dedicated uh, role for me, and that is just high corrosion uh, kind of environments. That's usually when I will bring this guy along with me. But as far as it goes, it is not a bad knife at all. It is really cool, and the Spidey Chef, I think, is a real staple in the overall um, in the overall Spyderco collection and family as a whole, even outside of the ones that I own. Really do like the Spidey Chef, super thin, super lightweight, and very, very slicey. Now, next one up, it, for me, it's kind of difficult. So these three I really do love, but I feel like the Spyderco Paramilitary 2 might be th in third place because uh, the Spyderco PM2 is great, but it's just very generic. Tons of people have Spyderco Paramilitary 2s. Not to say that this one isn't special. It is a cutlery shop exclusive, and it does have a special clip. However, when I get the right hardware, I'm actually taking this clip and transferring it over to the smock. So probably by the time you guys see this video, that will have already happened but I am just waiting on some hardware for the smock. Anyways, um, as far as it goes, it's a nice looking knife. It really performs quite well. I certainly do love it a lot more than the Para 3, even though originally I loved the Para 3 more than the Paramilitary 2. But this guy, I will say, uh, especially being in Rex 45, is just an awesome blade and super, super fidgety, but just a really useful knife. 
Next one up, I think has to be the Smock. The Smock for me is a really cool knife. I do like it quite a bit. And overall, I'm excited. This one might jump into my number one place, which is currently being held by the Manix. But for now, it's number two. And I really do want to use this one as a kind of test bed for modifications. As you guys can see throughout most of my spider codes and as a whole, I generally try to keep like the mods to a very conservative level. So there's gonna be a few modifications that I'm gonna to add to this. I'm gonna change out the um, kind of push button here for the lock and then I'm gonna change out likely the scales and then of course, like I said, put this clip on this knife and try to make it all kind of bluish purple. But uh, ultimately I wanted to run this one um, as a kind of test bed for a mod knife and that is because I like it quite a bit. It's super, super EDC friendly and I think that it will look very nice with some light modifications to it. So anyways, we'll see after the mods, it might jump into number one, but for now it is a solid number two. All right, first place up is going to be the Spyderco Manix 2. Now, some people disagree and they don't like the ball lock as much as I do, but I think the ball lock is probably one of my favorite locks that Spyderco makes. It's a real shame, that, in my opinion, that they don't have more ball lock knives or ball bearing lock knives out there because I think that this locking mechanism is super user friendly. But either way, it is a really, really, the Manix 2 as a whole is a great, like super useful all around her blade. I think it has a lot of properties of the Paramilitary 2. I just like the handle and ergonomics of the Manix 2 a little bit more. It does have that really nice ability, like many of the American um, Spydercos, to be able to choke up, get super close to that cutting edge. But overall, it is my number one. Now this one of course is an S110V and that makes it just a little bit better. It is definitely solidly in the super steel category, but uh, yeah. So those are my top three and Spidey Chef top four. And then I got the other three. So overall I have seven Spider Co's in my collection. I'm not really sure if I'll add any more. One that I would like to add for sure to the collection is the Yojimbo. But the problem with the Yojimbo is that it is very expensive in my opinion, sometimes rivaling the costs of the smock. But the fact of the matter is it's still using S30V and it's still using just G10, like standard G10 like this. So it's, I don't know, it's a hard knife to justify buying because it's very expensive, um, especially in any of its kind of limited editions. But uh, we will see how it goes. We will see how that ends up working out. So yeah, anyways guys, that is the Spyderco collection for now. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. As always, God bless and I'm out.